Greetings from Tokyo. This is Daisuke Beppu, and I hope all of you are doing very well today. My friends, if you don't mind, I'd like to take this opportunity to show you some more Blu rays that I have in my collection. This time, I'd like to show you some of the Blu rays that I have from the Italian collection from. 88 films. So as some of you may know, I am a horror film fan. I really like horror films and uh, by extension I like uh, Italian horror films, a, uh, Italian giallo films, and also Italian uh, kind of action thrillers or police thrillers. Uh, very much so. I'm I'm don't consider myself an expert in the field. Uh, far from it. I'm just a, a mere uh, casual fan. That being said, because of my feelings about the uh, Italian film, uh, the horror film genre, and also the giallo films, etc., I became very enamored by the releases that were made by the British label 88 Films. Now, 88 Films is a very interesting label, in my opinion, because they come out with some really Oh my goodness, it's, uh, some of them are really unique and uh, really nice to have. Others, I would say, are just very um, um, uh, you know, maybe not the best films in the world in terms of quality, but still highly entertaining. And um, yet there are other films that I think are of, of top-notch quality and worth and merit. And I'd love to talk about those uh, perhaps in another video. In the meantime, let me just take this opportunity now to present to you yet another collection video of the Italian collection of the 88 films releases. Uh, again, I won't be going into detail about each of these films, unfortunately. Uh, if you'll permit me, I'd like to uh, save those comments for another time. I think also uh, maybe some people think that I, because I'm a big fan of the Criterion Collection, you know, maybe some people uh, have the impression uh, that I am into maybe art films or high art films or uh, you know things of that nature and I really love the Criterion Collection uh, very much so but I don't necessarily see that you know one's liking for let's say art films and one's liking for maybe lowbrow genre films or horror films I don't see those two groupings as being uh, mutually exclusive of each other um, and I think uh, a liking of, of films in one group will certainly not preclude liking of films in another group. I mean, I think they can be, um, uh, in, they can mutually coexist, if you know what I mean. And uh, so therefore, I, um, I will show you these 88 films uh, releases. However, I do appreciate and understand that I think for uh, some of the viewers, maybe these films are maybe not to your tastes. And what is more, I know that uh, for me personally, I don't necessarily think that it's wise for me to recommend uh, a film, a horror film, uh, or some of these films just to anyone. So if you are, let's say, one who doesn't like horror films in general, or one that doesn't like films uh, that have a lot of violence or nudity or sex, uh, then perhaps these films are not necessarily for you. So please don't take my video here as being, uh, you know, f uh, wholehearted recommendations uh, towards you, because I don't mean it that way. It's just merely me presenting what I have in my collection. 
However, the fact that I do have these in my collection uh, is some kind of indication that I have a particular fondness for the, for the film uh, to whatever degree that fondness uh, is, whether it's of a high degree or a middle degree or perhaps even of a low degree. Even those that I, I maybe that fall within that low degree grouping, I still have a, a, a certain liking for, although there, I think there are some criticisms that can be made to, to the films that are in that are uh, uh, in that particular grouping. Uh, but let me just uh, stop rambling here and just uh, get, let's get uh, to the heart of the matter, shall we? So please let me now present to you my 88 Films Italian Collection Blu-rays. So first one is number one. Uh, these are spine numbered, by the way which is very nice. So this is, oh, and I should say also that all of these are for the most part uh, region B. So uh, some of them are uh, region free, but I think those are quite few. The general rule is that these are gonna be region B. So if you don't have a region B player, the only way you can watch these are probably gonna be through getting either a region B player or getting a region free player. So please just keep that in mind. Okay, now. Let's get on with it. So here is number one, Night Train Murders, uh, Aldo Lado film. This is a film that I'm not necessarily 100% fond of, although I see some of the merits of it, and it, it some parts of it I think are quite uh, quite effective. Um, it is uh, very derivative, obviously, of you know films like Last House on the Left, for example. But it's still a very interesting film. Uh, night Train Murders. Number two, uh, yes. What is this? Yes. The Bloodstained Shadow. This is a very standard giallo mystery film, and uh, it's quite a, a good one. It's it's not the best giallo in the world, but it's a very good example of a, of what a giallo can do, and it has the uh, the beautiful beautiful and talented and a wonderful actress, Stefania Cassini. Um, I should just say from the outset that uh, I have a, a great fondness for Stefania Cassini. I, I love her films and I love her work and I think she's just marvelous and she just exudes uh, a natural uh, kind of innocence and sexuality all at once, which is just a, a, an amazing uh, way to, uh, to carry out performances. And it's, a, it's astonishing. I, I love Stefania Cassini. Um, uh, yes, so this film features Stefania Cassini, so I think that alone uh, makes it very high in my, uh, in my estimation. Anyway, The Bloodstained Shadow. Next, uh, Medrelenzi's Spasmo. This is a classic, classic genre uh, giallo film. So if you haven't seen Spasmo, I highly recommend it. It's quite, uh, yeah, it's nuts. Some of it is just nuts. And uh, that's just the beauty of a giallo film. You know, a giallo film is just not a straight arrow. The beauty of a giallo film is that it just goes all over the place in terms of logic. And this film is no exception to that. So Spasmo. Next, ah, Lamberto Bava. This is a fantastic action. Oh gosh, Blast Fighter. Yes, uh, this is spine number four. So Blast Fighter. This is a fantastic, uh, exciting film. It's it's uh, it's not usually my cup of tea, but uh, the fact that it was in the ADA Films collection made me get it. It's really great. Okay, here we go. Um, yes. Uh, the director's name is uh, Marino uh, Girolami, but uh, the director is credited. His name is credited as being Frank Martin, which is a very interesting touch to this film, Zombie Holocaust. Now, this is a uh, this is an Italian zombie film, and uh, you know Italian horror has some great tropes. You know, there's the giallo films, which are the mystery horror films, uh, and then there are the uh, zombie films. And this is one of the zombie films, and it's a great one, uh, Spine Number no. Five. Um, it's quite, uh, qu yeah. It's it, there's some parts of it that I think are quite questionable, actually. But uh, if you can get through those, I think this is quite an entertaining romp. Spine Number no. Six. Ah, yes, the classic, 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 uh, A Blade in the Dark. This is another fantastic example of a of a modern. 
uh, giallo uh, because this is from uh, 1983 yes so spine number six and this is quite a, a disturbing one um, but it's a good one uh, with uh, some yeah, a memorable performance from uh, uh, the great uh, Michele Suavi so uh, Blade in the Dark Lamberto Bava probably my favorite Lamberto Bava film ah so here is by number seven uh, Joe D'Amato uh, Anthropophagus now um, if you haven't seen or heard of Anthropophagus, uh, probably that is a sign that you're probably not going to be a fan of this kind of film because it is quite disturbing in places. Uh, you know, one of the most disturbing films I've ever seen, I think. Um, but if you have heard of it, that means that you probably are a fan of this kind of work. And if so, then yes, the 88 film's release, I think, is just, just, stu just stunning. Absolutely stunning, and um, uh, this film is is uh, both horrifying and disgusting and suspenseful. And uh, uh, yes, Anthropophagus, spine number eight. S oops, sp I'm sorry, spine number seven. Excuse me. Spine number eight. We have Hitchhike. Yes. Okay. So Hitchhike is uh, <laughs> um, yes with the great David Hess. And the beautiful Chlorine Cleary. Yes, Hitchhike. This is another sort of entertaining uh, kind of thriller type. Next is spine number nine. And we get this in the, uh, the wonderful blue case. Uh, this is Zombie 3 or Zombie Flesh Eaters 2. Uh, and there, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> You either love or hate this film, and uh, I think I fall in the love camp because I just love its campiness and I love its sincerity and just our earnestness. Uh, it's it's some of the set pieces I think are quite ludicrous and and uh, dare I say it uh, a little bit a little bit um, uh, nonsensical. Uh, but that's part of the charm of this sort of film. Again, it's a zombie film and it's quite a. a, a a frightening one. Uh, just look out when you open the refrigerator. That's all I have to say. Number ten. Uh, SX. Exp I'm sorry. SS Experiment Camp. Uh, this is one of those, uh, yeah, Nazi kind of horror films. I guess you'd call. I guess if that's a subgenre. I'm not really a big fan of the this kind of uh, film. To be perfectly honest, um, it's a little bit of a uh, yeah, there's a little bit of um, uh, the exploitative exploitation factor in, in this kind of film is a little bit too much for me. Uh, although I think this is a, uh, you know, if you're talking about that particular genre, I think this is a fine example of a film in that genre. And, and, and on those terms, I think it's a perfectly um, uh, fine film. Uh, but uh, again, it's not really one of my favorite genres. So I don't necessarily... Uh, recommend this very much, but uh, it is uh, it is an interesting film to have. That's for sure. Ah, yes, number eleven. So here is "Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man." <laughs> oh man, I love this one. This is a this is one of those uh, uh, like uh, if you like the French Connection, you'll probably really dig this film. It's just such a this is pretty out there, uh, but it's a really fun entertainment. Okay, number 12. This is a Man from Deep River. Now, this is a, another subgenre of Italian horror films, which is the cannibal film. And the cannibal film is essentially what that uh, name entails, which is basically people eating each other, which is a... I don't know. It, it, this is also a bit of an unpleasant genre for some people, uh, understandably so. But if you like that sort of, uh, if you can stomach that sort of genre, then this is a very uh, seminal film within that genre. It's, it's, I think it's considered one of, if not the first uh, of its kind. And uh, it's quite a, quite an interesting one. Um, not my favorite in that genre, but it is a it is worthy and it's good and there's a lot of interesting aspects to it. But anyway, Man from Deep River. Okay. Here's another example of the genre, number thirteen. This is Emmanuel and the Last uh, Last Cannibals. 
Yeah, uh, this is a film that I'm, uh, this is also Joe D'Amato, and uh, I'm actually quite fond of Joe D'Amato films, uh, and this is another film that I'm, I'm particularly fond of. I think it's quite a, a, uh, an interesting entertainment for what it is. So, anyway, Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals. Uh, next, ah, yes, number 14, Burial Ground. Burial Ground. Now, this is a, this is a, pretty uh, pretty disgusting zombie film and I mean disgusting with uh, with much affection um, so if you again uh, horror Italian horror zombie film uh, if you're into that sort of thing this is a must must see okay next number 15 alien 2 okay so alien 2 this is a, this is another uh, kind of yeah, this is a, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what should I say? I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I should, maybe I should give this one a second chance. I'm not really too keen on this film, to be perfectly honest, although I do understand its merits. Uh, so maybe I should give this one another chance. I'll just set it aside and maybe watch it later tonight. Alien 2. Okay, number 16, Mad Dog Killer. Now, this is a fun uh, well, I shouldn't say fun, but I should say it's it's uh, it's pretty and it's it's a pretty intense entertainment. So uh, yes, so it's uh, uh, yes, Helmut Berger is in it. So uh, if you are a Helmut Berger fan, you should probably should own this uh, Mad Dog Killer. Yeah. Number seventeen, ah, the Cynic, the Rat, and the Fist. So here's another uh, kind of. Um, uh, uh, kind of a, a detective action thriller and this is also a good one uh, from the famous uh, filmmaker Umberto Lenzi I highly recommend it number 17 okay next is number 18 hands of steel now this is a a pretty uh, pretty fantastic uh, action film you know it's one of those action films that's sort of a, a rip-off of like Robocop or an Arnold Schwarzenegger film but it's just so thoroughly entertaining I can't begin to tell you you know this guy who's meant to be a part man part machine you know that kind of thing so um, Hands of Steel uh, <laughs> if you like that sort of film please give it a try and in fact I think I'm gonna if I have time uh, after watching Alien 2, and I'm still awake, I'll probably give this another play. So hands of steel, just put it over here. Okay, number 19 is Seven Deaths in the Cat's Eye. This is a wonderful little giallo film with the great Jane Birkin. Uh, so there you go, it's great Jane Birkin in this film. And it's, it's actually, it's actually one that uh, kind of surprised me. I didn't quite guess what the solution was until the very end, so I was quite surprised. Um, but it's a, it's a solid, solid standard uh, giallo film. You should really pick it up if you can. It's really nice. Okay, 19. Number 20. Oh, yes. Another Joe D'Amato film. Absurd. This is a kind of a... Well, it's not really a sequel to Anthropophagus, but... Uh, um, it, 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 it's described here as a would-be sequel to Anthropophagus, whatever that means. Um, but it's great. Uh, you know, George Eastman, um, you know, I, I love the way he moves in this film. He has a, a certain grace in his walk. He, he reminds me a lot of, of, uh, uh, Halloween and Michael Myers, the way that, uh, the walk of Michael Myers, uh, in Halloween and Halloween 2, especially, I, there's a certain grace to it. And I really admire George Eastman's, of uh, movements in here. It's quite a bloody film too, but absurd. 21. Yes. Uh, short night of glass dolls. <laughs> this is a really, uh, surprising film. One of my favorite giallo films, actually. Uh, highly recommend. I think if I were to recommend a giallo film, I think this would be in the, the top three uh, recommendations. It's I really find this just a, just a great, solid giallo. Short Night of Glass Dolls. Okay. Number 22. Ah, yes. Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. Um... Y yes, uh, here we go with another uh, uh, cannibal film, and uh, this is quite a 
Yeah, um, this is quite a <laughs> this is quite a memorable one. It, it's it's not for the uh, the weak at heart, I should say. But uh, um, if you can stomach this sort of film, as I say, uh, this might be up your alley. So, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. Number twenty-three, Enigma. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it, it's it's hard to say anything bad about this film because, of course, it's it's part of the legacy of Lucio Fulci, who is a who is a legend uh, in filmmaking. Uh, but it's it's not my favorite Lucio Fulci film. Let me just put it that way. But uh, I still respect it immensely. Uh, anyway, Enigma. Okay. Ah, yes, number where are we at? Twenty four. So here is Beyond the Darkness. Okay, so Beyond the Darkness. This is another Joe D'Amato film, and this is kind of like. Um, it's kind of like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, except just my, like all over the place. <laughs> and, and I mean that in a, in a sincere, good way, because it's a very bloody, gory, um, uh, just a suspense horror film. It's not really a giallo, I would say, but it's, it's just a real... Uh, yeah, it's it's like it's like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, except uh, more absurd and bloodier and gorier and with more nudity. So uh, uh, yes, Joe D'Amato, yes, you you you've done it again. Uh, this is actually one of my favorites in the collection. Twenty-five, yes, Syndicate Sadists, yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just one of those great, uh, again, uh, kind of a, a thriller. Uh, and uh, it has a lot of. I mean, you just take a look at that. He just even looks like Rambo. <laughs> this is just a, such a. This is. I, I love how how just earnest these uh, these films by Umberto Lenzi can be. They just they. <laughs> Um, I, I love this film. So, okay, I'm going to put this aside and watch it uh, this weekend. Okay, Syndicate Sadist. <laughs> ah, here we go. Um, this is uh, 2019 after the fall of New York. So this is number 26. Um, so Sergio Martino. It's quite a, a nice sort of post-apocalyptic film. Uh, you know, the wasteland, etc. So this is very interesting. Um, Not my favorite, but it's an interesting film. I, I, I like it very much, and I respect it very much. So anyway, uh, 27. Ah, yes, Iron Master. So again, another Umberto Lenzi film. Um, yeah, uh, this is quite a, another uh, just unforgettable uh, entertainment. Number 28, Amok. Okay, Amok. So there is a lot of... Um, uh, this is quite a, uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, nudity and sex in this film, and uh, this you know slow motion and all that stuff. So there is this is quite a uh, yeah. I'm 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 also uh, a, a fan of um, uh, sex romp films, and uh, this is certainly uh, one that is yeah yeah. This is quite a, an entertaining, uh, surprising uh, film. Um, it's, it's kind of scary in some places, I would say, also, with lots of sex. So if that's kind of a scary, uh, kind of thrilling sex film, if you like that sort of thing, then Amok is for you. And I actually, I find this very entertaining, actually, so Amok. 29, here is Delirium, um, Lamberto Baba. Another solid film from Lamberto Baba, I should say. Um, okay, next, number 30 is... Oh, gosh, The Perfume of the Lady in Black. I, I, I really dig this film so much. I, I think this is another one of those. Uh, it's a quirky, uh, uh, interesting, uh, well-thought-out uh, giallo film. And uh, I know some people don't like it very much, but I really find it a fascinating film and a fascinating example from the giallo uh, era. So, um, uh, what is it? Uh, the Perfume of the Lady in Black. There you go. And this is, I'm sorry, this is number 30. Okay. Number 31 is Body Puzzle. And this is another solid uh, horror thriller from Lamberto Baba. Excuse me. There we go. 
Yes, body puzzle. Number 32. Okay, so now we're getting into the films that I've ordered, but I just haven't had time to watch yet. So some of these films I haven't seen before, so I'm looking forward to, to watching them. Maybe I should start watching them uh, later this week. Uh, but anyway, they are unopened. So here's number 32. So Cold-Blooded Beast. Okay. Number 33. The Long Hair of Death. Actually, I've seen this film before and I really like it, but uh, um, I haven't seen this particular release from 88 Films yet, so I'm looking forward to that. I really like this film. Uh, number 34, uh, Touch of Death. Again, Lucio Fulci. I've actually seen this film as well, but I haven't seen this particular 88 Films release of it yet, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Number 30, oops, excuse me, number 35, here is Zombie uh, Creeping Flush. Um, actually, I did see this. Uh, this is one of the first 88 Films film uh, deep Blu-rays that I bought, and it's another zombie film. It's quite a, you know, this is quite a, a gross one, but uh, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, zombie Creeping Flush, number 35, okay. Next one is, uh, yes, Django Kill. So this is number 36. So I haven't seen this film yet. I, and I admit I am, not, um, I am not up to speed with my um, uh, Django films. So I'm looking forward to this one very much. I, I, should, I really should remedy that uh, blank spot in my, in my film going. So uh, this should be really great for me. Um, actually, considering that I probably should watch this first so um, yes let me just put this here aside okay there we go so that was number 36 number 37 is this one um, yes in the eye of the hurricane here we go so I'm not sure about this one I admit I haven't seen this one yet either so I should give this one a try I've heard some really good things about this film so okay number 37 number 38 yes watch me when I kill this is number 30 actually I have seen this and I I did see this uh, 88 films release this is a really how should I put it it's a bit of a uh, kind of a standard giallo not really the the most exciting giallo in the world but it's 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 solid it's pretty solid I should say and uh, quite uh, there's there's a, a scene involving a, a, a bathtub. Uh, there's a certain murder that occurs in the bathtub, which is, now that I think about it, it's, it's probably one of the most unique um, uh, scenes in, in giallo uh, film history. And for those of you who've seen it, you'll probably know what I'm talking about and why I say that. So it, it's, yeah, so actually come to think of it, this is probably, probably a, quite a, a unique and important film in the giallo film context. So um, I, I really should give it more praise. So anyway, yes, watch me when I kill. Okay, this is number 38. Number 39 is, yes, uh, Nightmare Concert or Cat in the Brain. And this is, again, uh, Lucio Fulci. And in fact, yes, I did see this one as well. Uh, the 88 Films release as well. And uh, it doesn't disappoint. Uh, one of my favorite films from Lucio Fulci, actually. So, Cat in the Brain. Okay. Number 40. I haven't seen this one yet. And this is The Mercenary. So, uh, Sergio Corbucci, of course. Um, I'm not... Oh, gosh, actually, Franco Nero. Yes, I probably should watch this one as well. And it also has the great Jack Palance. <laughs> um, yeah, um, incidentally, uh, according to the back, Jack Palance's character is named Curly. So if you know, Jack Palance was also in City Slickers, the film, and his character in that film is also named Curly. So um, uh, this is probably a very important film for those of you who are... Uh, city slickers um, uh, enthusiasts and historians so I would recommend getting the mercenary if you fall in that camp and I'll, even if you don't I would probably recommend I pr should watch this one uh, as well so let me just put it aside here number 40 and number 41 Navajo Joe 
uh, yes, Burt Reynolds. I think this is the first time Burt Reynolds appears in the 88 films catalog, so good for him. Uh, again, this is not one that I have seen yet, but I really should give it a try very soon. And this is number 41. Okay, so that is the end of the collection video for with respect to the Italian collection of the 88 films catalog. Now the 80 films, the 88 films catalog, as you may know, also has some other um, films that are not necessarily um, classified in any grouping. There's also the great uh, slasher films group. And um, in fact, yes, in fact, I actually do have the slasher films a collection as well. I think I have it complete up to us up to I think I think I'm complete uh, up to now which is August 2018 so maybe one of these days I will show the 88 films slasher films uh, collection uh, if you're so interested. Um, there's also an Asian films collection which has a lot of uh, really wonderfully just uh, campy and uh, just berserk um, uh, martial arts films and the like so I, I have I don't have all of those I have most of them so maybe I'll uh, take uh, uh, the opportunity uh, another time to show those two as well and then there's also a, a, um, a sub uh, category within 88 films called the vault or the vault films and those also have uh, spine numbers so I I think I have all of those and they are really kind of um, uh, uh, yeah, grindhousey, uh, rough, and uh, no holds barred uh, types of films, and I, I, I'm really happy to have those. Uh, so maybe one of these days I'll show those to you as well. But uh, if you'll forgive me, I'll just stop here. Um, if you have any questions or comments uh, about these or any other films, uh, please let me know. Um, uh, you know, one of these days I really should provide. Uh, more substantive comments about the maybe the Italian horror films or giallo films that I really like. Uh, so maybe if you don't mind, I will uh, take the time uh, sometime soon to make a video presenting those. Uh, but in the meantime, just so today, if you have any questions about the 88 Films catalog uh, or anything like that, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to answer uh, to uh, the best of my, uh, my abilities. So uh, otherwise, uh, let me just stop there and just say thank you very much for watching. I know that all of you are really busy. So uh, the fact that you've uh, watched the video, even if it's for a little bit, uh, really i really really appreciate it thank you so much it means a lot to me and uh yes so uh, with that let me say thank you and take care cheers